WNST, Towson, of Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are getting out, having our crab cakes uh, in the community, and our Maryland Crab Cake Tour presented by the Maryland Lottery. Let yourself play. We're going to be Black Friday doings with the Harford County Executive at Conrad's Crabs. We're going to be having Conrad's Crab Cakes, and then we'll be at Pappas in Cockeysville on December the 3rd. Uh, and uh, I hear that Mike Bordick's going to be joining me for a little baseball conversation. We have a lot of wise conversations around here. My favorite ones usually include ice cream. And I, they gave me my own scooper. I mean, I, they didn't even know it was my thing when I was up in uh, Hershey a couple months ago for the corporate outing. She's been ducking me from the beginning. I must say that Jamie Hanoski's been a, uh, a friend over the last couple of years, and I see her doings on Facebook and ice cream. We do business together, and Rob Santoni's running me up and down Bel Air Road. And uh, my wife actually snuck into the Wise on on Hollabird and Delvale, uh, the little Wise that used to be a Mars to do all of our Thanksgiving. So our, our Thanksgiving turkey came from Dundalk, from the motherland. But I got this pumpkin ice cream over at the Maiden Choice because the pumpkin ice cream would have melted if I get it anywhere else, because that's my nearest wise. And it's, I'm running out. Jamie, I'm running out, and it's almost eggnog season. Uh, every week I have scooped this out. You can see where it's melted during other segments. I'm not going to have it melt here. How are you, and why have you been ducking me all this time on the radio show, huh? I am good. I've had to fight everybody else off to get on here today. Are you kidding me? Oh, come on. Now you're being all kind and stuff as I scoop out. <laughs> uh, have you had the – don't lie to me because I there's 50 flavors and you're the wise spokesperson and all that and you're supposed to eat them all, right? Um, have you had the pumpkin? I have. It's, and it's really very good. good. Yeah, it is it's really good. really good pumpkin ice cream. It's creamy. And I paid it the highest compliment that I can pay anything. And I miss my mom, you know, the holidays like this. We lost my mom four years ago. It tastes like her pumpkin pie because my mom was a little bit like Emerald at the end, you know, dumping extra whiskey in like the Cajun cook. She would dump extra cream in everything. And my mother was from the South. So her pumpkin ice cream was always a little less spicy, a little less nutmeggy, and a little more i don't know warm and creamy you know so uh, this is that so here happy thanksgiving to you what are you thankful for happy happy thanksgiving um well one i'm thankful to be on here with you nestor and two you know thankful for my family who is wonderful um you know and you know i'm looking forward to this holiday season it's one of my favorite times of the year I just did something that I've been threatening to do, and I did it accidentally. I put the lid on the ice cream, and I had the scooper, and I, I'm, I, I get – I get really <laughs> sticky during these segments. I mean, literally, right? So I, I, I've been threatening to put my – pumpkin ice cream into my morning coffee here so i'm mixing and matching this morning and making a mess here happy thanksgiving what happens yeah now you're in pennsylvania right so we talk about wise every week we talk about um sunbury and the ice cream factory and the last two years and shipping and moving groceries around and feeding people this is an eating holiday and i've already done the not too much butter, not too much sour cream in the mashed potatoes. I've done that segment. I sit here and eat ice cream, and I, I, my metabolism running around Chicago and beating the Bears this week, so we'll have a good time with that, uh, is running a little hot as well. But uh, we, we talk so much about giving, and, you know, on these segments and these wise conversations, and it all started with my friend Bill Cole saying, we should be doing more charity stuff at WNST and at Baltimore Positive. Um, this is a week where, you know, I've had the Barks folks, and the Be More Humane folks talking about animals and how much I love animals and Giving Tuesday. And everyone has a charity. Everyone wants to do something. You guys make it kind of easy that when I come over and get a turkey, my wife can throw you an extra bucket check out. Um, and you guys amass a ton of money. And this is just such a – this is a time we all want to do something. That's right. So, um, you know, we have Thanksgiving. It's a, it's a week and a season where we are to be – uh, generous and give a lot of gratitude for what we have. And, uh, you know, we have Thanksgiving and then we have Black Friday. You have people out shopping. People are shopping all weekend. We have people shopping on Cyber Monday. And then we have Giving Tuesday. Um, so we shop, shop, and then we give back. So um, in all of our wise locations on Tuesday, we celebrate the National Day of Giving. And customers are asked to make a one, three, five dollar donation, or they can round up their order to that next whole dollar. And all of those donations go to a local um, 
food pantry, they go to a rescue organization, um, some go to pet shelters, but we ask our stores to choose an organization that is near and dear to them um, and they come up with the nonprofit that they want to make that donation to on the day of giving. So it's not something that we're giving them and saying, hey, we're going to make a donation to this charity. You're going to choose and you're going to get to pick who we're donating to on this day. And then we, as a company, will give each store $500 in addition to what they collect with their customers. Um, and then they make that in total to that organization um, on day of giving. It's been so, a while. It's really and, a great organization. Well, you know, what's amazing is like uh, we've had this relationship going on and I've seen it in other – I notice it more, you know, now that I go around and I shop and other places and moving around, who's doing what, who's promoting what, who's out in front of it. And it's my relationship with you guys and why is it um, – we're always – you're always doing something. And the Roundup program just feel, and I see Roundup in other places now uh, that maybe I didn't notice it before I started actually talking about it and thinking about – uh, whether it was uh, paralyzed military folks last month, or as I said, I know how much you guys love animals as a company. We'll be getting to that in a couple of months as well. But you guys mm -hmm. do it on a seasonal basis. I mean, we've done a lot for for food and food challenge folks here, obviously in Baltimore. We have that going on, and as we get into winter, trying to keep people warm and trying to keep the heat on and doing all of these things. Uh, but you guys are all – whether it's back to school and doing stuff for kids then, but around the year, your company's put a lot of thought into this. That's right. Um, you know, as a food retailer, we want to make sure that we are giving back to the communities where we live and work. And, you know, we want to – you know, make sure that those who are food insecure um, all year round and not even just at the holiday season, but all year round um, are able that we're able to help them put food on the table. So, you know, it's really important to us that we're able to help them um, and all of those in our community who need, you know, help with whether that's food, if they need help with their pets, um, if they are a military member and, you know, we can um, raise awareness about paralyzed veterans of America, or if we're raising awareness about the American Heart Association, all of those things that we're doing, we're making a donation, but we're also helping to raise awareness, which is another, you know, huge reason why we're doing these programs. Well, it bleeds down into the stores, right? I mean, it's, it's stuff that you see when you're checking out. It's stuff that people yeah. talk about in the stores and being around the stores. And I've been in, um, I, I said last week to my wife, I said, if, if they look at my rewards, they're going to think like there's no way he could possibly have gone in all of these stores this year because I've just <laughs> traveled and traversed the state so much, right? Back and forth and getting fruit on the Eastern Shore in the middle of my crab cake tour. And you know, I'm out in Frostburg and out, you know, all these places where you do have locations. And and I've talked a little bit about, you know, how the sausage is made, so to speak, where, you know, these Mars locations that I was going to all of my life, your family, a Pennsylvania family, came down and took these locations over. And in some cases, not to be disrespectful, it's made them better, made them, I, I think, unique place to place now that I've been in a lot of your stores. I was kidding Don last week I, on the segment because Don's from Catonsville. And I was over, and we've sold our condo. So, uh, you know, finally, I, I think it's the first time I've said this on the radio because I haven't had Jeff on. But uh, we're going to close on our condo between Christmas and New Year's. So we're looking for a new place to live. And um, we looked in Columbia. We looked in Catonsville, downtown, Locust Point. We're looking everywhere. There's nowhere we're ruling out. White Marsh, Towson. We're literally looking a lot of places. But we're in Catonsville, and the maiden choice a lane location is just inside the Beltway near UMBC. And in that location, as I check out every time with my ice cream, by the way, honey, the ice cream's melting. So that's that's the signal for my wife to uh, put the ice cream back in the freezer. So I, I'm, I check out, and on the way out, I look up, and they have all of this Catonsville Comets local hats, scarves, winter mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, is Catonsville high? Like if I lived here, would that be the nearest? Because it doesn't feel like – Kate, it feels like the next neighborhood down. And I said to Don, I almost, if I, next time I go in, I should have surprised him and gotten something Catonsville to wear on our next podcast because he would just think that's cool. Um, but you guys are neighborhood to neighborhood. And I see all sorts of Maryland stuff and Fisher's popcorn and all of these ring right. ding local things that are, and not just that. I, in your store, I had a neighbor move into my place. Um, 
<clears throat> from your neck of the woods, a uh, we are Penn Stater, right? Mm -hmm. By the way, it looks it looks like fun. I haven't been up there in 25 years, but that's a heck of a party. We'll have to get you up there. Yeah, we'll I'm, 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 I'm definitely DeCosta's kids going there. I I gotta come up. I, I haven't been since '98. My wife's never been. She's got a little Jones to do it. So my neighbors move in, and I just. The time we met them in the hallway, I'm just sort of like, oh, Penn State had a girlfriend there and the Stickies and the Skeller and the Regatta and all that stuff, right? So they left me Stickies. From the, They're the same ones. I picked them up in the store on Maiden Choice Lane. So, like, when I'm talking about, like, local, interesting bakery items, you guys kind of go out of your way. you got a whole cookie department at Santoni's San place, like a chocolate thing that I didn't even know – until I found it in the corner, like 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 homemade chocolates with like a family chocolatier and making special subs, the Bell Garden sub. Every location yep. is every Pennsylvania location like that. Uh, we have a lot of them, yeah. So a lot of our stores are local to where they're located. So if you have something um, like the subs that you're mentioning, you know they were the a, they were ice a big item. Yes, I love tea berry. Don't <laughs> knock it. <laughs> Well, here's what I'm, I'm, I'm like half kidding about it, but I think given the Amish, the Pittsburgh, the Philly, the Mountain, the Appalachian, the Eastern Shore, like all of these things that every store is unique. Like Rob Santoni and I talk about King Syrup. Do you even know what King Syrup is? No. See? It, and my father had it on – I mean, it's not my taste. I brought it home once for my wife. She didn't like it at all. But it, it is – it's syrup on pancakes, and it's a, it's a little molasses-based, so it doesn't taste like it came out of a tree in Vermont. It's a different kind of product. But all of these things I've never tasted, and I'm curious about life now. That's why I do Baltimore Positive. So tasting new foods, I'm thinking like if I go I'm, – I'm driving to Pittsburgh. If I find a Wise, is there some special donut that I don't know about, like these stickies or like these regional things that I'm really into that like would – that I'd want to try, like tea berry ice cream that my wife thought tasted like Pepto-Bismol. I thought it tasted like birch beer. Yeah, so we – I like um... – we sell the birch beer in our in our store, but you apparently know what birch beer is, right? Delicious. Yeah, my dad yeah, was from Pennsylvania. So we have like my red, dad was from blue. My dad okay. kept that stuff okay. around. Okay, so you yeah. know that. But we have like the red birch, blue birch. We have cream soda, like all that stuff. Love those things. Red what what, what red red birch what? Yeah, there's red birch beer, white birch beer, blue birch beer. Mm. How do they so taste good. different? Um, the sweetness, I think. I mean, are they flavored like berry or something? No, no, they're all birch beer. I can't explain it. It's just good. If you like Have you birch ever had beer. a proper Baltimore snowball? No. <sighs> See, this is the kind of stuff. I mean, we live 50 miles apart and you don't even know about this. Stuff. But you've had crabs and crab cakes and all that, right? Yes. But all you need to do is just cross the Pennsylvania like. Like Luke, my partner, my partner in crime, covers everything with me. He lives in Shrewsbury. You go up there, they don't even know what a crab cake is. There's no crabs. There's no Harrisburg, Hershey. And it's so close, right? Like we get the chocolate down here, right? I mean, you know. Yeah. And so I want to learn more. And this is why I was giving Hannah a hard time about this. I said, what else don't I know? Tea berry ice cream, these things. Like my wife didn't have like tasty cakes in New Hampshire. And I got the candy cake. Ice cream, by the way, it's melted. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> she, she never had never had, you know, proper tasty cakes. That's a Philadelphia thing, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, tasty cakes are good. You know, I never realized that they weren't uh, everywhere right? until right. I started working, right? So it's like Utz potato chips. You think they're everywhere, and then you realize they're not. So there's yeah, all of these had, brands, right? Have you had Middlesworth potato chips? See, now you're talking about, see, no, I haven't, but I, I okay, want to. Okay, so those are Central salt. PA. Those are like a half hour from here, not even. Um, Describe them, like a kettle chip, or they cooked a little crisp. They have they kettle salty? chip, or they have regular, so they have both. Um, but the barbecue are so good. I'll send you some. I'll send see, you a little, I'll send you a little basket. I'm of the guy, Central and, PA and I, listen, I, I credit my dear friend Julio Bermejo who is the uh, Mexican tequila ambassador to the United States. He runs this great place in San Francisco, and we've been, we've been life for friends. We travel the world together. We were in Tokyo and so uh, Seoul, South Korea two years ago, 
But we were in Brazil to see the Rolling Stones. There were two million people on the beach in Copacabana, and we saw the Stones play. And when it ended, there was only one direction people could go. There's water, right? So it's just the sea of humanity unlike anything I've ever seen. And we were just kind of like holed up because we were walking, and it was crowded, and there's crime. And like we slid into a supermarket, beautiful Brazilian, I mean, this is one o'clock in the morning. Brazil's kind of open all night. It's kind of like, Rio's kind of like New York. There's, But there's 22 million people, not nine. I mean, it's the most sea of humanity you've ever seen. We slip into a market and we're hungry because we couldn't get any food. There's people selling stuff at a, you know, coolers on the streets. But we go in and it's colorful. Like the market's like, like the rainbow. Oranges and yellows and greens and fruits mm-hmm. and reds and and apples and it just was a color and it wasn't a an outdoor market this was like a wise was a very it was an upscale market quite frankly and we slipped in and julio says pick up anything you don't recognize and put it in the basket (laughs) and i'm like okay "Okay, dude you know we've been drinking having a good night we're watching the stones i'm like and we went back to the room and he pulled out a knife in the room and he cut open every piece of fruit and vegetable said try this try this try this You've never had this. This is only in South America. This is fruit. They get this in Chile. They get this in Argentina. They, they grow these in Uruguay. You know, eat this stuff. So I have, like, this thing. So, like, the fact that I could go to the eastern shore and eat the freshest crab I've ever had in my life and have different prepared – I ate crab every day for 31 days, and I didn't do it the same way twice, including the Y Signature Crab Cake, by the way, with uh, Rob. So I love eating food. So, like – when you tell me you're going to put a care package of like potato chips I've never had, I love that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I definitely will. So we'll talk about that after this. And then when you get it, we'll jump back on and do another segment so we can tell everybody what you're eating. Well, while my ice cream melts, tell everybody about Giving Tuesday and what they can do. And uh, it, she, my wife has shown up to take the ice cream. I want another scoop. Okay. Giving so, Tuesday. so Giving Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, customers are asked to make a donation in store at checkout. Uh, very simple, one, three, five, round up. Um, all of those donations go to a local organization that was chosen by that store um, and store manager and everything stays local. So all those donations that you're making at the store, which they always do, uh, will stay local, um, but it will go to a local organization. Um, they're all different. A lot of them in, I know the Baltimore area, I know talking to Rob, they're working with that student support network. um, I've had those folks on and and that that Um, is so close to home. I'm a Baltimore County life or student, you know, resident for many years and just thinking about kids being hungry in school and not, um, you know, that that's something that hits home for me for sure. You know, right. So So a lot of the stores, if you're shopping in wise markets on next Tuesday, November 30th, make a donation and we'll go to the student support network. All right. Well, I I donated some my, my favorite section. I do you guys early in the morning, so I'm eating ice cream at 8:30 in the morning. It's like a great excuse. This is all that's left. This is scooper. The ice cream has left the building. And I'm gonna tell you, I was over Maiden Choice, and I'm afraid of buying ice cream. My wife bought this Gucci cooler. You know, one is really expensive for concerts and whatnot. In the in the trunk of the car, if we're driving up to Hershey to see a show, which we've been known to do three or four times, um, that that you know we would keep things cold, and they were already picked clean of eggnog and I'm, I'm concerned. I, I'm just letting you know, eggnog comes it's and good. goes. You, yeah. Well, I got to get well, it, we'll but I got to sure find it. Them. Yeah. Well, I was we'll over there you. when I bought the pumpkin and I bought the pumpkin early in the month. And I must say, as we sit here today and I made this admission, I have not yet heard the Mariah Carey song or any holiday songs yet. So I haven't felt oh. all this season. I haven't. I, I saw a couple of trees in the airports this weekend when I went out and saw the Ravens beat the Bears. I don't want to bring that up with you again because uh, there's a – you're a Closet Bears fan, aren't you? Be honest. <laughs> I am. I am. You didn't Why? know that. You're Pennsylvania. You take, Why are you a Bears You didn't fan? take me with you to Chicago. I and I know, and you might have gone. I might have. Well, it was cold outside, I'll say that, and your team lost. But have, so you've give me the bear story. Jamie Anoski's here from Wise. She's ducked me for a year. She's had every staffer she can think of, and Rob Santoni multiple times come on the program, and you've been ducking me. And I don't. If I had I known, I would have had you on last week. We would have made a whole hoot nanny of this, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. I've been a bear fan. Bears fan now. I don't probably twenty Thanks years. 
what what was it Jim Harbaugh was it Rex Ryan or uh, Buddy Ryan what I mean you're not old enough no, to be my like boyfriend. Walter Payton <laughs> no my boyfriend's a Bears fan I should say fiance now oh. but his Okay. He's a Bears fan. So we've we've been um to out to Chicago quite a few times. We've been to one of the coldest games at Soldier Field uh when they played the Green Bay Packers on Monday night. So you're hardcore. So taking you to Chicago wouldn't even have been like special because you've been before. Well, it's been a long time. Now that I have an almost six year old, we haven't been there for a while. <laughs> All right, man. Well, my, my uh, I have a friend that coaches for the Bears. Like we didn't get together over the weekend because he was working hard, but uh, and things obviously didn't go well and aren't going well right now in Chicago. Uh, but uh, you know, I I've been out there. We only play there every eight years, so I don't get to go yeah. often, right? So this is the third trip. It's the first time the weather's been even remotely hospitable. You know, the first time it was 41 degrees, raining sideways. It was during the World Series when the White Sox were winning the World Series. It was 18, 16 years ago, and then eight years ago. They delayed the game because they had a tornado ripping up from Peoria. Um, so, you know, and, and we're like behind glass in the press box. And I'm thinking probably not an ideal location here. Probably should uh, should shelter below is what we should do. So uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was a it was a boring game. And then we wind up winning and I wind up talking all Thanksgiving week about defense, offense and all that. And. All I want to do is have a wise conversation about giving back on Tuesday. So I appreciate the ice cream, the partnership, and I'm not going to give you a hard time about the Bears. But now that I know you're a Bears fan, that's good to me for me to know that. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Well, thank you. I'll leave it at that. And it's a tough season. It's. It's been I a said, tough I said, I even tweeted, it must be tough being a Bears fan. I think it's tough being a Lions fan. And on behalf of all the Browns fans, I think it'll be tough being a Browns fan Sunday night. <laughs> a little football trash talk for this week is that all right yeah. thanksgiving well uh, you know what what well, last thing for you is there anything you eat on thanksgiving i'll give you a thing that i eat okay so this is a east baltimore and it's a polish thing my my friends the gibson family uh were our neighbors love them to tears anybody familiar with stan stock uh the music festival here that's stan gibson i grew up in that family, essentially. And on Thanksgiving and Christmas, we didn't have much of a family in, in East Baltimore. We adopted their family and would go to their house. They made kielbasa and sauerkraut from Ostrowski's. I talk to Santoni about this all the time because he stocks it. So you talk about incredible local things. I bet you've never had an Ostrowski sausage because you're like, it's not local to you. So we do sauerkraut and, and Ostrowski's uh, delicious kielbasa. Uh, and, that's that's been on my and I married a Polish girl from New Hampshire that does these huge kielbasa, sauerkraut, guamki, pierogi, all this stuff on Christmas. So now you're talking my language. See, 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 see. All right, <laughs> see. All right. So what's on what's on your Thanksgiving that I need to know about? You know, I don't think there's anything out of the ordinary on our table. What? Really? Yeah. Like every once in a while, we'll do the kielbasa, but you know. We're, I'm really the only one that likes it in the house, so nobody else is going to eat it. So I don't make it that often, but we do ham and turkey and we do, you know, mashed potatoes and stuffing. I'm trying to get Gucci with like the vegetables. some broccoli. I really, I, I don't have anything. I don't have anything fun to even tell you. <laughs> I, I told my wife, I said, I want to do some sweet potatoes with like some marshmallows and some like we do those. nuts and stuff. I want to do like regular. Don't, doesn't everyone do that? Oh, we do like a green bean casserole with the mushrooms and the onions to honor Carol Fountain, who was like a mother to me that, you know, she made it in the 80s and I adopted it. So I've adopted family. I've gone into other people's homes and eaten their food. I grew up in John Raffalitis' house, Mr. Pete and Greek food. So when I have Dennis on from Coons 4, we talk about Kodumbithis, which are these delicious little cookies that like go great with coffee. Um, I... I gained weight this month. It's a good thing you started the month with the dietitian. Emily set me on the right path, and I'm just I'm, – I'm exhibiting portion control, but I keep saying to my wife, I don't just want broccoli. I want, like, broccoli all gratin. I don't just want Brussels sprouts. I want them, like, fried up with some bacon fat or some duck something or some <laughs> – you know, so we're going to get – we're going to get – I'm going to roll my sleeves up on Thursday. So uh, you've inspired me. Thanks for making me hungry. Jamie Anoski's here from Wise Mark. It's another wise conversation uh, and, and a lot of eating and at least a little bit of ice cream. And it really – the pumpkin ice cream does taste great in the coffee, just so you know. Try the cinnamon next. There was only one left in the back, the cinnamon. And yeah. I thought – 
has it been there six months or is it like, should I grab it? <laughs> I, I like sure it. I, I like it next to the pumpkin pie. It goes really well. Or apple pie, cinnamon ice cream. Keep going. I, there, there's holiday flavors. There's like some holiday bark thing with a funny name that I looked at. And Peppermint I'm like, bark, I think it is. Man, it had a fun, more fun name than that, I think. I okay. think it did anyway. All right, Jamie and Oski's here. Uh, what? It is peppermint. Go ahead. Well, you can go to the, your wise market and go discover all the 50-some-odd flavors that are there. And I'm going to call you and yell if the if the eggnog sold out because, like, I, I passed it by. I had it. It was in front of me, and I could have grabbed it when I grabbed the pumpkin. And I'm like, eh, you know, we don't, we don't have room in the fr My wife made a bunch of soups, so we don't have room in the freezer. So, like, all of a sudden, it's like, all right, I'll put off the eggnog till December. And now I gotta find the eggnog. So I'll let you know if I don't find it. Jamie Noski's here. It's a wise conversation. All of our wise chats are brought to you by by Wise Markets, and and they're giving and they're doing. And you should be shopping and you should be using your rewards card uh, and finding them. And if you're out at uh, at Rob Santoni's store, 206, stop by. Tell them I said hello. Tell them to hold me a Bell Garden sub. I'm Nestor. We are WNST, celebrating all things thankful and gratitude. We are Baltimore positive.